Before we are here in Blue Vase Studios, folks, I am super, super excited for my next guest. I know I always say I'm excited for my next guest, but I'm beyond uh, excited for my next guest. He is one of the most prolific motivational speakers in the world. He's a best-selling author. He's an entrepreneur. He's a business person. He coaches some of the top CEOs in the world. He spoke all over the world in, in crowds of as, as high as almost 100,000 people. He continues to do it every single day. He's motivated me throughout the years, and I am so, so excited to have him on. Please help us welcome Mr. Les Brown. Mr. Brown, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's always a treat when great people meet. <laughs> I, lo- I, I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal that one from one from you. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> So, Mr. Brown, so uh, what we'd like to do on the Alden Report is, uh, you know, I have a list of 10 questions that I ask everybody, and then kind of from there, we just go off script based off of what you say. You have such an amazing story, um, but we'll just kind of, you know, I'll try and do my best to stick to the script, and then we'll, uh, we'll just kind of see where it leads us. Is that is that good with you? That works with me. All right. Fantastic. Wonderful. Let's do it. Wonderful. Now, so for someone like you who has been, you know, motivating people all the world, uh, you know, teaching people how to become speakers, teaching people how to tell their story, consulting with top CEOs and, and, other, and even, you know, small businesses all over the world, success is so important to so many people. Um, how do you define success? To me, success is doing something that you love to do that allows you to be of service to others and it it gives you a sense of fulfillment in your heart and and you'll be able to make a mark with your life and your service yeah i mean i think that's perfect i mean it doesn't get any more concise than that do what you do what you love to do but you know with that though a lot of times people aren't able to to just do that right so so if you're you know you're working maybe at a job that you that you don't like and in and what do you what sort of advice do you give to people like like that that are trying to to get to that place where they do love what they do i think that's a very important question i was working on a job when i decided that after seeing zig ziglar dr norman vincent peel wayne dyer and several other speakers i said I can do that. They were making a difference in people's lives. They made a difference in my life. And so I started out by developing the discipline of memorizing five quotes a day. That's how I started out. I didn't quit my job and and jump into the speaking industry. I started out developing a skill of memorizing five quotes a day and how to use those quotes strategically in the context of a presentation. Today, there there are very few speakers, and I'm not bragging, that know as many quotes as I do. I I spoke for, and people can go online and and see Manpower, T.D. Jakes' Manpower, Les Brown. And in that presentation, I gave over 217 quotes and I never repeated myself. So find some area, some skill, some little niche that you can say, I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna master this and develop a gradual transition plan from where you are now to where you want to go. Because when you decide that you want to create a new chapter with your life, trust me on this, Things are going to look real good for a while, and then all of a sudden, the bottom will fall out. You know, right. Forrest Gump was right. He said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> and so that, to me, the universe testing you, asking you the question, do you really want to win? Do you really want this? Because this dream, it comes with a price on it. There's a cost involved. And are you willing to pay the price? So develop a transition program and acquire a skill that you don't have right now that can serve you in that area that you've selected. You know, I love that advice. You know, and the last thing you said, develop a transition program. And, and you know, I'm a fan, obviously, of of you know following your passion uh, and 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 you know doing what you love to do. 
But, you know, I, I think the transition thing is really, really important. I, I've met with people from, from one side where they literally just, you know, quit their job without a plan, but they wanted to do what they wanted to do because they loved it. And then I've met people that have done the same thing, like what you said, and they've transitioned into it. And the, and the latter, the transition is, is, in my opinion, I think the smartest thing to do, right? You know, you're jumping all in is, is honorable, but sometimes it's, it's not the smartest move, right? Without question, particularly if you have other people relying on you. See, I was a father. I was in, in married at the time. I had car notes, a mortgage note, children in school. So I didn't want to put them at risk for my dream. Right. And so I had to develop a transition strategy so that when the hits come and they're going to come, my favorite book says, Think It Not Strange that you will face the fiery furnaces of this world. You will not, you might, you will have tribulations. So what you're able to do, you can weather the storms. You can take the hit if you have not put yourself out there too far. And the other thing is a passion, a dream, is something that you love so much that you do it for nothing, and you do it so well that people will pay you to do it. So I did a lot of volunteer work. I, I volunteered to speak free for a variety of audiences for a long period of time to test my content, to see how well it would go over, to watch and observe the audience, how they were listening to me, to listen to the listening, and to test my timing, and to see what I was doing was working, because the key to becoming successful as a professional speaker, you, you have to develop a keynote presentation that will impact and transform and create a shift in the minds of the audience individually and collectively. And so it, it's very important to know what it is you're doing, to listen to the listening, to experiment, to watch how they're observing you and develop an ability to create an experience with the audience so they leave there feeling better about themselves but talking about you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. And I, I uh, not to make this about me at all, but I, what, I, I did stand-up comedy for a few years, and I, and I, I did it because, you know, I, I, I don't speak nearly as much as you do, but uh, I, I said to myself, you know, if I can get on stage and work through – being able to, to, to ad lib and to be able to, to, to uh, you know, speak on my feet and, and do the things. And then also, I was really interested in the process uh, as, as these comedians would, you know, one word or one um, facial expression or the way you just shift your body could, can really make the difference between a laugh and not a laugh. And, and it's very similar in, in speaking, right? It's, it's the same thing. You're just, you're, wor- you're working the process. If you can make people laugh, that's the most difficult job in the world, then you have the ability to master the art of speaking. Laughter is a very important part of my presentation because if you listen to any of my presentation, I will go from laughter to saying something that's thought-provoking. Because when people laugh, they don't think. The mind shuts down. And so now their heart is open and now you have the ability to go straight to the heart with what it is you want to say and by the time they gain consciousness they lock you in their heart <laughs> it's very fascinating <laughs> i love this and 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 now you've achieved the objective of what it is you want to achieve and that is to get into the heart because words that are spoken to the heart it shows up in people's lives mentally emotionally spiritually, and every dimension of themselves to help to create the next greatest version of who they are to become as a result of being in the presence of you and listening to your words. I lo- absolutely love it. Uh, next question. In your, now, your, your story, you know, from when you were a child to where you're at today is just a truly amazing story. And you know, I could talk to you for hours, but I know we only have a little bit of time. But in business, uh, in your business career, what, what has been your biggest... Uh, professional obstacle, and, and how did you overcome it? The, the biggest professional obstacle that I faced was to believe that I, born in an abandoned building on a floor, I, being adopted, uh, being labeled educable, mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, failing again in the eighth grade, no college training, 
that I have the ability to speak to AT&T, Procter & Gamble, McDonald's Corporation, IBM, Xerox, that I have the ability to compete with people with PhDs and MBAs and years of experience that I did not have, that I stopped myself for 14 years. A friend of mine, Mike Williams, he's the author of a book called The Road to Your Best Stuff. The Road to Your Best Stuff. I encourage all of your listeners to get it. And so he, for 14 years, Michael, Mike Williams told me, Brownie, you could do this. You can do what Zig Ziglar is doing. You can do what Tony Robbins is doing. And I just couldn't believe that was possible. That was my biggest block. We are conditioned to believe and being logical and practical and realistic. And I just could not see myself earning uh, $1,000 in an hour, and I wasn't making $1,000 in a week. I just couldn't see it. And so you could imagine the first time that I earned $410,000 in an hour and a half that I almost fainted. I, I just couldn't believe that it was real and that was me. There's a scripture that says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. And I say that when you are pursuing that which is in your heart, don't ask yourself how you're going to do it. How is none of your business? Lean not unto thine own understanding. There are some things that you can do right now that your mind cannot comprehend, but you know it in your heart. And so when you commit yourself, things begin to happen. When you commit yourself, doors will open that you did not see. When you commit yourself, you will begin to attract the people, the resources, the things that you need to do what it is you need to do that will literally blow your mind. If anybody told me, I'll never forget the first time I received the check for $2.5 million. Uh, King World paid that to me, the advance on doing a talk show in 1992. I just could not believe that my name was on that check. And, and, and the thing is that there's something that Maya Angelou said, I believe in. She said, there's nothing as painful as an untold story that's buried in your soul. I believe, Michael, that all of us have an energy signature. There are certain people as I speak right now that I'm going to reach, but there are certain people that you and I will reach together. But there are certain people because of your energy signature that you're going to reach them with your story. There's something about your story, about your continence, about your charisma, about your presence, about your voice that will resonate with them that will create a shift in them. I might be able to reach their ears, but you'll be able to reach their ears and their heart. And so one of the reasons that I'm adamant about training speakers at this stage of my life at 72, we learn, we earn, and we pass it on. I strongly believe that evil prevails when good men and women do nothing. That the world exists as it does because those who are walking in darkness outworking the people that are walking in light. And so before I leave the planet, my goal is to amplify and replicate my voice and to help to create the next generation of great speakers that will be the transformers of the planet. Well, I absolutely love it. You know, I wrote down, you know, 14 years, and I wrote Believe I Can as, you know, one of the first couple things that you said. And the interesting thing that I, th I want to just kind of reiterate is, so for 14 years, you were, you were working on overcoming your own mental blocks uh, that you thought you couldn't do it. It took, it, it, it took someone even like you that amount of time to really, for, to really work for you. Is that, is that accurate? It just, yes, because it just didn't make sense. I, was, I remember when Mike Williams said to me, Brownie, listen, all of us are born the same way, dumb, naked, and speechless. You can learn. <laughs> you go see those guys because 
you love what they do. It's in your heart. You like to help people. You're always holding court. You have a little funny laugh. And your passion for people will show up. And you just got to try. There's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy outside can do us no harm. And so I was my own worst enemy. I just could not see how I could have something of value to say that someone will listen to me. And even now, when I go on YouTube, and I encourage everybody to go on YouTube and, and look up Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. The speech is entitled, It's Not Over Until I Win. I love that speech. I Thank you. When I see that, speaking to over 80,000 people, I, I can't even remember when I did it because I was in a zone. I was someplace else you know i remember when when um, the cleveland cavaliers won their first championship lebron james said i had to go to another place that all of us when we are faced with our destiny when we are faced with something that we're called to do that we have to go to another place within ourselves to rise up to the occasion to be able to embrace that to challenge ourselves to to move to that next level we have we all have the capacity to do it but most people never go there and and are not as fortunate as i have been to have someone consistently in my ear i remember asking mike williams i did an interview with him and i said what made you continue to call me every year for 14 years and he said i just thought it was my duty to stay in your ear wow, I broke down and started crying because I would have died, Michael, wow. with this Les Brown, this voice that you now hear. I would have died with that voice in me. And I didn't even know it was in there. There are things that we can do. There are things that we can accomplish. There's impact that we can make that's beyond our comfort zone that we should challenge ourselves to go for it. This God said it. If you're not willing to risk, you can't grow. And if you can't grow, you can't become your best. And if you can't become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? And so the, the value of operating beyond your comfort zone, which Brian Tracy rightly calls the danger zone, is because in order to do something you've never done, you've got to become someone you've never been. And that's what happened for me, that as a result of his encouragement, I came to a place within myself. I realized that sometimes you have to believe in somebody's belief in you until your belief kicks in. And so he believed that I can do it. I respected him. And even though I did not, I took marching orders from him. When he said, go do it, Brownie, I doubted myself, but I didn't doubt him because I respected him. I encourage everybody that's listening to create seven collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. Seven collaborative, achievement-driven, supportive relationships. Dr. Dennis Kimbrough out of Atlanta said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. <laughs> and so by surrounding myself with people that I can learn from, people that would hold me accountable, people that held me to a higher standard, people that push me and stretch me, that it took me to a place within myself that I could have never gone by myself. And as a result of that, it allowed me to be able to change people's lives around the world. I remember going to Poland and, and to see 25 to 1,000 people standing, applauding as you come into the stadium to speak to them with an interpreter. That That is mind-blowing. I, I felt so blessed to be there when I spoke in London, when I spoke in Australia, when I spoke in Hong Kong. All of these places, who would have thought somebody born in an abandoned building on a floor in a poor section of Miami, Florida, called Liberty City, 
being adopted, labeled educable, mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, failing again in the eighth grade, no college training, would be able to create that level of notoriety to transform people's lives around the world. And I believe that I'm not an exception. I'm an example of what's possible for all of us if we decide to live from our heart rather than from our mind, because when there's a conflict between your mind and your heart, follow your heart, or where your heart is, there your treasure is also. Wow, absolutely love it. Folks, uh, if you're listening, you're watching right now, we are on with, again, one of the most prolific motivational speakers He's in the world. He's a best-selling author. His name is Les Brown. If you'd like some more information about Les Brown, you can just go to lesbrown.com. Also, if you're looking to improve your speaking skills, if you want to, you know, be the next Les Brown, you heard him earlier. This is what he's doing. This is his life's mission right now. He is teaching people the skills that he's learned over decades. If you'd like some more information about how, how to actually do that, um, he has an event coming up. It's Saturday, June 24th uh, in 2017. It's actually in Fort, La- Fort Lauderdale. You can go to his website, lesbrown.com, or you can also go to events by arise.com and you you can also call this number so write this down if you want to call for some more information you can call this number it's 954 954- Seven two four zero nine zero zero. So that's actually um, this upcoming Saturday, June twenty uh, fourth. He's going to teach you how to tell your story. He's going to teach you how to be very, very unique in what you do. And and ultimately, again, he talks about you know developing your own power within your own voice. Uh, and it's a it's a one day intensive intensive workshop. He's not going to be the only one. There's going to be a whole host of people there that are going to really show you how to take. Take you and take whatever is within you, like he said, and, and turn it really into a, a voice of power. So, again, if you want some more information, you can also find Les, by the way. Uh, you can find him on Twitter, uh, at LesBrown77. Um, uh, Facebook is probably his most active. It is uh, at uh, the Les Brown. He's probably, I think, he, I think you have close to almost 2 million people there. I was watching him. Uh, uh, he does Facebook Lives as well. So, check that out, Les. Um, so, you know, when... When we when we're talking about uh, you know uh, you know success um, and in you, you, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm just going to ask it anyway. In your in your experience, education, formal education, higher education beyond high school, um, not not your own personal story because I we, we know we know your story, but others. Do you feel as though that that higher education is important for business success? Yes, in, in certain areas where certification is required. Okay. But also being in a community of higher thinkers, that is valuable because of the relationships and the contacts that you can create. One of my sons took a few classes at Harvard, and he met people from around the world that helped him to accelerate his goal of the things that he wanted to achieve in business. So being in that kind of community is important. Now, it's not mandatory in business. They did a study of some top achievers, top business people around the world, and over 3,000 of them, and they discovered the common denominator among them was 85% of them reach their goals because of their attitude, 15% because of their aptitude. When I saw the movie of Ray Kroc, who started McDonald's, he he listened to a quote by Coolidge, former President Coolidge, who said, persistent, nothing is as powerful as persistence. Talent is not. The world is full of unsuccessful people with talent. Genius is not. The world is full of unsuccessful people with genius. It's almost a derelict. Education alone will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. He said persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. And when Mike finally was able to tilt the needle in the direction of me saying yes to myself, that there was a level of persistence that I developed, that I was going to go to the top of the mountain or I was going to die on the side. And so I've won the highest award from the National Speakers Association, the Golden Gavel Award from Toastmasters International, selected among the top five speakers in the world, General Norman Schwarzkopf, Robert Shuler, Leah Coker, 
and Paul Harvey and myself, and they're all gone, so I'm the last man standing. <laughs> <laughs> but I was persistent. Og Mandino, who wrote the book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, he had an affirmation that said, I will persist until I succeed. I can't tell you the number of times, Michael, I said that to myself when I was sleeping on the floor of my office on the 21st floor in Detroit, Michigan, and bathing in the sink down the hall, hiding in the closet from the janitorial staff that came in after 12 midnight to clean the office. I can't tell you the number of times that I said to myself, I will persist until I succeed. As I stood out the wind, I stood and looked out the window and in the city of Detroit and, and saying to myself that all of those lights represent dreams that have been fulfilled. And one day I will not be sleeping in my office on the floor. One day I will have this whole floor and my company will be the prominent sign on the door, Les Brown Unlimited. One day, if I continue to persist until I succeed, I will own this space. And that became a reality. And sometimes people ask, well, when will it happen? Well, when will a baby talk? It will talk when it talks. Some talk earlier than others. When will they walk? They will walk when they walk. When will your dream happen? It will happen when it happens. And your job is to persist until you succeed. You know, uh, I read... Um I read a book uh, called The Talent Code, and you know you always hear in uh, you know about the struggle. Uh, and in The Talent Code, he talks about physiologically in your brain there's a substance called myelin that I, I mean, you know, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but myelin it, it actually grows and it protects your neurotransmitters in your brain. So that that whole and physiologically when you act when you do struggle when you fall down and you get up and you work through a problem, you know that whole saying what doesn't kill you makes you stronger it, it is a real thing. So. Um, the struggles that you've gone through, uh, do you believe that that the struggle uh, is is almost crucial to success? In other words, I mean, there's, there's really, there, you know, for me, I think it is. I don't know. I just do, do you think it's a, I think well, it's almost like a, the, a necessary struggle, part of the recipe. The struggle introduces you to yourself. You, you remind me of a story that a little boy was going through a, a section of the forest and, and he saw a caterpillar that was trying to get out of the cocoon and the butterfly was trying to get out of the cocoon and he watched and observed and then it finally freed itself and then hit the ground, fluttered its wings and it flew off. The next time he saw that and observed it, he took a safety pin out of his pants and, and made an incision in a cocoon, and the cat and the butterfly fell to the ground and fluttered its wings, and then it died because the struggle itself gave it life. And so, the struggle it empowers you, the struggle it in- expands you, the struggle introduces you to a part of yourself that you don't know and you'll never discover without it. But there's another dimension about of us, and that is called, as you know, the reticular activating system. It's a network-like group of cells at the base of the brain that the struggle activates that. We've all had the experience of saying, I got to wake up at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, and without the assistance of an alarm clock, we woke up at exactly seven o'clock. That reticular activating system, it determines what gets through and what does not. It, it allows us to begin to screen things, but it allows us to see things that will lead us in areas. It, it's that intuitive part of ourselves that we activate that people who don't put themselves at risk will never ever learn how to do that and learn how to live from that intuitive place within ourselves that allow us to tap into the genius and the greatness that all of us have. When you're pursuing your greatness, you don't know what your limits are, so you act like you don't have any. 
Wow, that's a, that is that, that is such a such a great story. I'm I'm glad I asked that question. Uh, you know, so f- for someone uh, like you again that, tra- that has traveled all over the world, you you know, you you have businesses, you you're coaching people, you're doing all these different things. Like you said, at 72 years of age, and, and again, I want to thank you uh, for your time. Again, for those of you who, who just tuned in and are listening now, we are on uh, with Les Brown. He is one of the most prolific motivational speakers in the world. I'm super super excited to have him on. If you'd like some more information about Les Brown, you can just go to lesbrown.com. Uh, you can also find him uh, on YouTube, and his speeches on on YouTube are, are awesome. Les, I had him uh, had him all synced up to my Sono system in my house, and I was blasting all around my house, which is awesome. And my daughter was listening to, it, which is really great. So, <laughs> if <laughs> thank you, you. If you'd like some more information uh, about Les Brown, again, just go to go to lesbrown.com. You know, I was going to ask you um, one question, but I want to back up for a second about the the speech that you talked about. In Georgia, uh, the one where, where you say it's it's not over until you win, and I, that, to me, I get chills just even just thinking about that speech. Did it come to you when you were playing uh, Connect Four uh, with your with your son? Is that how that slogan came to you? Yes, that, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. When I watched him when he stood up and and walked away, he was victorious, even though he lost his game straight. <laughs> <laughs> he was concerned he won, even though he only won one game. Right. And I said, wow. And, and, and just think about the fact that we will fail our way to success. Walt Disney, he had, you know, he, he, had, he filed bankruptcy seven times and had two nervous breakdowns. So we must learn to embrace failure because every failure you experience brings you a step closer to a victory. So we we must learn to live with that. It's a part of the process. And I learned from that. And when I gave that speech, I was nervous. And Mike Williams was there. And, and he said, Brownie, just look at me anytime you start shaking in your pants. Because I went to the bathroom seven times. I had to pee. <laughs> Oh my God! I peeped out and saw all these people in the stadium, and I've never spoken in a stadium before. So they had to come get me out of the bathroom, <laughs> and he and, and he he said, "Brownie," I said, "Yes." He said, "You're scared, aren't you?" I said, "Yes." <laughs> he said, "Man, come out!" <laughs> I said, "Mike, I can't hear the voices." He said, "Brownie, listen. Pretend you're in your living room. I'll be at stage right." look over there at me and just pretend that you're in your living room and give it everything you got. You are Mamie Brown's boy. Your mother is watching you. I said, Mike, don't use my Bob on me. He said, come out. I said, I got to pee. He said, you've been in there long enough. This is your seventh time. I said, well, seven is my lucky number. He said, come out, man. They're stalling. They need you to hit the stage now. It's I came out, and then I had to pray for me. <laughs> oh, my God. But I got through it, and I did it. And so when we embrace fear, when we decide to live from our faith rather than from our fears, as Zig Ziglar called it, false evidence appearing real, faith finding answers in the heart, that our lives take on a whole dimension. And, and we are able to step to a place and accomplish and do things that we were chosen to do, and we decided to answer the call. We decided to live, listen to that still, small voice within. And that's powerful. That's magical, and there's nothing like it. And we'll have several experiences like that. Most people, I do a presentation called Live Full and Die Empty. Most people die full with their talents, abilities, their gifts still in them. I strongly believe, Michael, we were created on purpose, for a purpose, with a purpose, to leave our marks. Wow. I, yeah, it's just it's just truly, truly. I'm I'm so blessed to have you here. I know we don't we don't have a, a, too much more time, so I'm kind of jumping around. I'm looking at some of the, some of the questions that I always ask. Uh, uh, by the way, the, I'm so glad you told that story about you had to go pee seven times because when when I speak, uh, the same thing happens to me. So I'm I'm glad that's a normal thing. 
<laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot of people who listen to our podcast, they're young entrepreneurs. Maybe they, um, you know, they just got into the workforce, or they have that entrepreneurial spirit, and they're and they're looking, uh, you know, to grow. Whether they're already in an organization or maybe trying to start their own thing, what advice would you give young people in the workforce who are in the workforce today and how to grow? What what should they do? Well, number one create a transition strategy. Over 20,000 jobs a day, according to Department of Labor, being eliminated by robots, by artificial intelligence and apps, and cheap labor abroad. There's a book called, that was written five years ago, it was not very popular, called The End of Work. In less than 17 years, 80% of the jobs that are now being done by human beings will be done by robots. So that's a very short time. So you, the jobs that will be retained are jobs that will be jobs that low paying jobs and no job security. So it, it's better to have something else going for you. My mother said it's a, it's a poor rat that only has one hole to get some cheese out of. <laughs> <laughs> so you want you want to create multiple streams of income. I'm a speaker. I train speakers. I'm an author. I'm going to be doing a live television show on Facebook Live. I'm creating a new chapter for my life at 72. I, I believe that I've got a good 10 to 20 years in me because I'm taking care of my health and my goal is, is to live full and to die empty. And this is the era, what the late Peter Drucker called the era, the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity and tremendous competition. So the entrepreneurs that are listening now find something that you love and master that. There's a book called average is over. Find something that's you, that you say here, I'm going to plant my feet. I'm going to pour my mind and my skills in this. This is a place where I'm going to create the greatest version of myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially to leave a legacy. I believe Harsh Mann was right. He said all of us should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. And so decide to live a life of contribution. It's great to earn money, but it's even greater to transform lives and to leave the planet in greater shape than how we found it. I believe we live in the greatest country in the world that gives us an opportunity to live our dreams and to make our mark and to build a legacy and leave the world better than how we found it. You know, it's interesting that you brought up the the point about, you know, artificial intelligence and, and jobs going away. You know, do you is there a... a uh, a business now that, that you believe that, you know, the average everyday person could get involved in with a little bit of risk uh, or, or little to no risk, and it's, you know, fairly simple that you would maybe try tell someone to, to go into and, and, and work their skills. Is there a particular type of business that you like? Yes. Speaking. Think about it. When, when a company, when they lay off 5,000 people, those 5,000 jobs don't go away. Those 5,000 jobs and the responsibilities of those jobs will be spread among the people that's still there. There will always be people that will be working. There will always be employees. So as a speaker, as a trainer, as a life coach, your job will be to, one, give them the mindset that they can do it, that they can take on this new responsibility. Two, to develop the skill set and the leadership skills that's required in order to master those new responsibilities. And four, to, to, I mean, three, to, to handle this thing called life. Because new things, there's a new levels, new devils. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Stuff's happening. I mean, there's an angst in this country that we have never experienced before. I spoke last night 
And I said to people, don't worry about what's going on in the White House. Worry about what's going on in your house. Exactly. Learning how to focus your mind. We have distractions today and addictions that's being created with a telephone. There's a special on 60 Minutes about how addictive the telephone is and, and to manage and to, to minimize your distractions. And that telephone is a major distraction. And they've created technology that uh, 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 affect us mentally and physically that we're addicted to it. You cannot pursue your greatness if you're constantly being interrupted. And, the, and, the, and so learning how to harness your will and to focus your thinking, that's major today because we're taking a lot of hits. There's so much incoming, so much stuff's happening. To you over the next year, Michael, three things, three tragedies will happen to you or I or to someone we care about. That's just the way it is. That's just called life. And we have to learn to handle. I have a son who's bipolar, who believes he doesn't have to go to a psychiatrist, who believes he doesn't need his medication. All he needs is medical marijuana, and if he gets some sleep, and, and if I give him some money, he'll be fine. It's not that kind of party. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm not going to be this ATM, and he's got to manage that. Now, even though he's 30 years old, no matter how old your kids get, they're still your children. But here's what I have to do. I have to step back and say, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change. I cannot change my son. The courage to change that I, the things that I can. I can change how I deal with this and the wisdom to know the difference. Life is about surrendering. And so even though I'm able to motivate and inspire millions of people around the world, it's a humbling experience. My son who looks like me, who has my talent, but he can't hear my voice. Now, Michael, he might hear your voice, but he can't hear my voice because familiarity breeds contempt. And so... He's too close to me, but you, when you speak, Michael, he might hear you, but he will never hear me. I teach speakers, don't speak where you don't have a voice. There's a book called The Kabbalion I remember reading years ago that said, the lips of the wise are sealed to the ears of the ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, you know, I, I, you know, again, I, I could, I could just keep going, but I know you're, you're a busy man, so I'm just, I'm gonna wrap it up. I, I wanna, I wanna thank you, you know, so much for, for spending the time uh, with me today, Mr. Brown. Um, you know, you've inspired me. Like I, t I, I mean, I've listened to your, to your speeches all the time. I, like I said, I blast them on my Sonos system all over the house a lot. Uh, I, I just, I mean, I, I love the "It's not over until you win" for me. You know, it's just, it's just awesome. You know, you got, you got to be hungry. I, I love everything that you're doing. And, and, you know, just, I know you've heard this a million times before, but you know, you've, you've inspired me and I know you're inspiring people all over the world. So it's just, it's just awesome. So folks, if you'd like some more information. Well, well Michael, I, I want to say this to you. The reason that you're inspired by my voice, because that which is in me is in you. And what I've done is only a tip of the iceberg of what you're going to do. When I heard the voice of Mike Williams, and Mr. Leroy Washington, who said to me, young man, someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. That I had no idea. Mike, who I admired his speaking skills, he said to me what I'm saying to you. He says, Brownie, it's in you. And what I've done is only a tip of the iceberg of what you are going to do. And the same thing with Mr. Washington. And so you're attracted to my voice because there's an even greater voice in you and there's a higher calling for you and you know that. And my talking to you is only confirming that which you already know in your heart of heart and that you are walking in that direction with your life. 
because you were born with that in you. You were purpose. You were chosen out of 400 million sperm to inspire people to pursue their greatness. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And I want to say I'm looking for seven people who want to become world-class speakers and get paid and tell those seven who are prepared to train and invest in themselves to email me personally at lesbrown 77 at gmail.com. Seven is my lucky number. <laughs> w- wonderful. So, again, if you want to be one of those seven, you again, you can email Les Brown personally. It's lesbrown77 at gmail.com. Again, if you'd like some more information about Les Brown, if you want to, you know, learn from all the things that he's done, if you're listening right now and it's, and it's, and it's, you know, June right now, um, this coming Saturday, June 24th, 2017, he has a one day intensive workshop. You can go to lesbrown.com to get some more information about it. You can also go to eventsbyarise.com and then write this number down as well. If you call this number, you'll also get a discount if you just mentioned that you heard it on the Alden Report today. The telephone number is 954-724-0900. Now, if you're listening to this or you're watching this after the event, Les has uh, some amazing things right there on his website that you can take advantage of. And he also has upcoming events literally all over the world. So just you know, stay in touch with that. Follow him on Facebook. I mean, his Facebook lives, he does it, he does it for free. And, and the stuff that you, you know, that you're going to get just from him, just literally just turning on his computer, uh, is, is truly, truly amazing. So, um, again, Les, thank you so much for being my guest. My name is Michael Alden and we'll see you next time.